Today we commemorate the 50th anniversary of the beginning of the Great Global Drought. That's right, back in 2032, 50 years ago today, we first recognized that the world was in the grips of a global catastrophic drought. And here we are 50 years later, and we've seen the effects of collapsed and, and empty cities, of people needing to migrate, and of course, global famine and significant change. My name is Graham Codrington. This is Throw Forward Thursday. And for the last few weeks, I've started these scenarios with a breaking news story from the future. Today's story is not actually from the future. It's from the past. In fact, it wasn't even 50 years of major drought. It was a 300-year drought that brought the end of the Bronze Age and particularly the collapse of the Eastern Mediterranean cultures uh, that we only now can see in archaeological findings. I, I highly recommend Dan Snow's History Hits a podcast. Uh, and the episode on the Bronze Age Collapse, I'll put a link to it in the show notes. He interviewed the author Eric Klein, who wrote the book 1177 BC, The Year Civilization Collapsed, and its sequel after 1177 BC, The Survival of Civilizations. And in his book, he talks about the way in which the vast interconnected civilizations of the Eastern Mediterranean collapsed quite dramatically after a 300-year period of significant uh, global climate change and drought in particular. There was climate catastrophe and famine and drought and invasion that caused massive amounts of people to move and migrate, uh, which brought them into conflict with each other, left vast areas uh, of the world that they had inhabited empty and moved people to new areas. And in his book, Eric Klein talks about who survived and why. Uh, and the technologies that allowed them to move then uh, into the next era beyond the, the Bronze Age, into the Iron Age. And it is a significant story to understand because it talks about what happens over a long period of time uh, when the conditions that make life livable change dramatically. And that's really where we do find ourselves Today, I know that there's a bit of culture war discussion and conversation about whether climate change is happening and what the causes are and what we should do about it. But if you take the, the culture war noise out of it, there's no doubt that the world in which we live is being stressed and is under pressure and that the weather patterns and climate that most of us grew up with has significantly changed at the moment. And we need to be considering what the world will look like if significant parts of the world are no longer inhabitable as they are now. What that will do to migration uh, and to country borders and to the use of resources, especially shared resources, like water from rivers that, throw, that, that flow through multiple countries and different states. We cannot ignore this as a major potential crisis uh, for the world and a major cause of significant shifts to the geopolitical reality of our world. You cannot live in the world that we live in today and not think about how civilization might change and even collapse in our lifetimes, or at least by the end of this century. A little bit of a sobering wake-up call with a massive lesson from history for our future. Go and listen to that episode of Dan Snow's History Hits. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. As always, thank you for joining me in the Throw Forward Thursday studio. I'll see you again next week.